My first horse experience there was when I was about, I reckon, eight or nine. And they had an old horse there called Mechanic. He used to hang around the house and you know, eat the lawn. And and oh, I, I sort of suddenly had this, got this desire, I'm going to ride this ride this horse. And, and, me, and me and my sister, we went down there one afternoon, we managed to run it into a bit of a yard. And we found an old saddle and we put it on this old mechanic and you know, little fellas and we crawled up the stirrup on and I got on it and it threw me, threw me off, like bucked me off. That was my first experience, which you think would have put, put most kids off. But, so then it became a challenge to me. I, you know, I, had to, I had to get that better of that horse. So I just kept, kept at him. I eventually ended up, you know, he, I did some miles on him. He turned out to be a good old horse. So that was the beginning for me. Oh, we use a lot of horses because it makes the cattle quieter. They're, they're easier to handle. And I think, you know, the, a man on a horse relates better to a cow on the ground than a machine. I'm Trent Priest um, from the Pilbara, head stockman at Kalani. My name is Chelsea Walton and I'm from Bar Yeah, they, they look for a place where there's horse work, so you know, we put our hand up there. One of the things I love being at Kalani is going riding horses every day, going camp drafting on, as soon as we get a day off. I like the family atmosphere, the cattle work and the horse work. It's part of the culture that it's a team effort, and we, you know it doesn't matter what we, what, what your position is in that team. We're all in there, and we're all doing our doing our bit. Kalani is 1.3 million acres, and we're running running roughly about 45,000 head of cattle here now. We coach a muster, so we go out and we do that. We, you know, we block up a, a mob of cattle that we call coaches, you know, and, and they're the starting point. And then we, we walk those coaches along, they're controlled by horsemen. The helicopters work out wide, and they bring, they bring the cattle within you know, with four or 500 metres of the coaches. And then we have horsemen that trot out, or some that we use motorbikes a bit, and they bring the, they bring the, the, you know, the fresh cattle to the coaches. So you know, we keep the machines away, you know, the helicopters away from the coaches because helicopters cause stress, they, you know, they stress cattle, they make them uncomfortable, they're not happy having them around. So it's really finding a balance between the, between the old and the new like, and, you know, and still doing it properly. And still, you know, the, the, still the priority is the welfare of those cattle. See, Brahmin cattle are very sensitive so you don't want to make a lot of noise around them. So you can, you can work them quietly and efficiently. And I think that flows through to, you know, the, 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 if the animal's quiet, you know, they're, they're more relaxed, they do better, they do better on the pasture. And that's, you know, from a business point of view, you know, cattle that are doing better, that are relaxed, aren't stressed. And I think that all, you know, horse work's a big, plays a big part in making that happen. Oh, I think it's just something that I believe in, and I think it's, and it needs, you know, we need to see more of it in, in, in this environment. Is, is, is getting back to the basics and using horses, and, and keeping cattle quiet, and, and training people that, you know, giving them every chance to be, if they do go down that road, to be good at it and, and successful. And I think we all have a responsibility to the, to the industry to be training people, and you know, when, when they finish with us, you know, they go to somewhere else, and they, they have value. They can you know, have skills that. That, that you know, value to the next employer, or value to us for ongoing value to us, or and to the whole agricultural sector. I think we all, you know, everyone needs to be has a responsibility to train young people and you know, educate them. Like they come here very green at the start, and then by the time they leave, they're quite capable. And you know, you sort of got your stamp on them, like they've been. You know, they come from Kalani and they're half handy. You know, by the time they leave, it makes you a bit proud, I guess. By the time they leave here, they should be able to bloody change a tyre and, I don't know, unload a truck and get around a mob of cattle, lock up, break a horse in, shoe a horse. If they can't do that, well, we, we haven't done our job properly. <laughs> so when they arrive on station, we, 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 we'll have a look at them on a horse, put them on a horse, we'll assess them. You know, we, we give them a score from, from one to five, with one, one being a you know, really experienced, very capable horseman, to five being a beginner. 
so then we you know we do the same with the horses the really you know the, the horses that are a bit touchy or you need experienced person on is that horse is a one and then a real you know beginner's horse is a five and then we we start from there really once once we you know think we, we, we've got an understanding of what their abilities are what you know what, what their potential is and then we start with the horsemanship school which is focused on safety being safe around a horse well, that, you know that's where you got to start Each person's giving, given five or six horses for the, for the year, so that, that's their horse, they're responsible for that horse. And I think that, you know, that adds another dimension to them, they get a responsibility, they, 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 they're allowed to build a relationship with the horse. You know, they can take, take their horses to the local camp draft or rodeo or gym car or whatever they want to do. Well then we teach them how to look after the feet and how to put shoes on. So that, that can be a bit of a process. <laughs> There can, there can be a few shoes that don't stay on very long, but eventually, eventually we get them to you know, be competent with putting shoes on. That, that might take six months. So that's another skill they pick up. We break our horses in in between our mustering rounds, so August, September, and then we, you know, we think they're right. Like we give them a young horse and we help them break them in. And, we're doing it with them and showing them, and then we, you know, we start matching personalities as we're going along. You know, and at the end of the process, the breaking in process, you, we, we've really worked out who, you know, which personalities are going to match, and then we, you know, we, we let them know that's yours and that's yours, and away you go, and it just gives them, a, you know, a real sense of achievement. You know, they've, and then they get to they get to work that horse in the second round mustering, that, that horse they've just broken in, and you know, they get to see it getting better and. You know, obviously we're always you know, helping them and advising them and don't do this and try that. And... At Kalani we have about 125 horses here and about 90 working horses. Two, two stallions, we have a Australian stock horse stallion and a quarter horse stallion. So we're, 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 we're sort of trying to get that, um, that cross, that quarter horse, stock horse cross. First we want a good quiet horse with the right temperament that we can put young people on and know they're safe and also know that that horse can do the job you know, with an with a, with a, with a, you know, inexperienced person. That horse is going to still work a cow and it's going to, it's going to be handy. We, we, we just get rid of anything that's sus, you know, that's, that, that, that's got a bad temperament or could potentially hurt someone. We could have a kid, as an example, come here and do three years and leave with nothing, no, nothing to show what, you know, what they've achieved or what they've done as far as you know, a certificate they can put in their resume or something that has credibility. They can, you know, they, they can have all this knowledge, but they, when they go to their next employer, they, they, they have nothing to give them. You know, it's not in their resume. So we encourage that certificate, certificates in agriculture or whatever they really want to do. We, you know, we, and Charles Darwin University and are very, very helpful there. And they've got some very good lecturers that, that are on board and have the practical experience as well as the theory. And, and they do a great job. You know, th those kids don't get their certificate unless, they, unless they're competent. Yeah, so yeah, we, 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 we believe in educating people and the more we can educate them. You know, but you got, you know, your education's good, we also got to have the practical side. And you've got to find a balance there too. Like, too much theory doesn't work in this environment. So. Stock camp, or, the, or the, we call it the bush camp, or the mustering camp, that's got about seven or eight people in it. And then we have a wiener, wiener crew, which is usually four. The age range between people that we generally get uh, is between 24 and 17, sometimes, sometimes younger. I think it's just having a positive attitude, and that you know, attitude that, you know, that, that never give up, never give up attitude, and you know, it's never too hard. I think that's the attitude we need. But everyone's got different levels of experience and skill, but as long as people are doing their best and really trying. And you know, obviously they have to like the lifestyle as well. You know, the lifestyle fits into it. One of the things I like about working here is all the horse work we get to do on a horse every day and um, learning different things with everyone else and whatnot, yeah. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's a really nice environment to be in and um, yeah, the people. I 
that's that's my favourite thing about Kalani, the people. Um, I love that it's all horse work, like I love horses, cattle work and all the people here, it's very homely, very family orientated. A lot, a lot, a lot of the horses stuff, you know, everything sort of revolves around the horses so I enjoy that a fair bit. Yeah. Um, I love being able to ride horses every day, work cattle every day and be around family and awesome people. Uh, the lifestyle, the horses and the cattle, mustering and all that stuff. I just love the atmosphere, the people, the life. <laughs> I love waking up early every morning, working with cattle, working with my dogs. It's just a dream. If I feel stressed or something's bothering me, I jump on a horse and go for a ride and I you know, you come back and I feel more relaxed and it gives me time to I sit up there and I think. And, and they're just such good, loyal friends. You can get a lot done on a horse.